Did you just Patrick Swayze that box? <laughs> Don't, Don't tell her we're dead. dead. They're dead. Oh. oh. Hey, Jeff. What's up, John? How are you this morning? So nice to meet you. I love your background. It's oh, great. Oh, thank you. Man, I love this series. Congratulations. I've been waiting patiently. Not only am I a fan of Creep Show, but also the anthology format is one of my favorites. And Halloween is just the best time to see this series. And we got new season, new scares. Uh, I hear that Mapleton has some new residents. So. <laughs> yes, they just moved in, but uh, not everyone's happy about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> What kind of family are the Belascos? <laughs> well, they're really your, you know, typical average all-american family and they pay their taxes and they you know they send their kids to the they have their daughter you know go to school and they're you know the only difference is that they have a you know a, a problem in the daylight they're you know they're vampires, they're vampires. So, <laughs> yes it's funny as i watched the episode it was like maybe the pitch is if the griswolds from vacation were vampires right <laughs> Yes, exactly. And as a matter of fact, I mean, the entire thing sort of grew out of a thing where I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if a monster woke up from a dream? You know, do we always have the the person in bed wake up and go, oh, my God, you know, that was terrifying. And it was like, wouldn't it be funny if the vampire woke up, you know, afraid of the humans? And that's sort of where it grew out of. And, you know, like I said, they're the sort of nice people who, you know, people have prejudices against so that's that was say, the, the concept i was going to say in this concept that the vampires even have a swear jar you know and uh, that was funny that's right you yes. know yes and <laughs> was it my imagination or did i see like in the morning the morning their morning in the middle of the night uh the breakfast table was that a high c gag because that looked like that picture was like they used yes. the high c commercial so it was, <laughs> yes, high it was a, <laughs> yes and it was a you know a, it was a frozen fang instead of <laughs> so, i love yeah. it so, and and it was it. Yeah, that was yeah that was tough. I mean, it was, it was tough because you could go so far with those gags, and then I mean, people are probably rolling their eyes already. But it was sort of like even the crew was like, "Oh, should we do this? And should we do that?" And I'm like, "Well, we kind of have to toe the line a little, otherwise we're really you know going to the monsters." So. Well, I love that, you know, like science fiction does, you know, Star Trek has been doing it for years and also horror films do. They're allegories, you know, so vampires are a way of life. They're not fully accepted in society yet. And uh, it's a commentary, right? Because there's a love story between yes. two very different types of people. Yes, that was it. It was, a, it was sort of, you know, Hammer Films meets Romeo and Juliet. You know, that was sort of the the idea. <laughs> yeah. Hate is thicker than blood, right? <laughs> I love That's that right. <laughs> And, tell and the me cast, I mean, they were just wonderful, you know. Oh, they were great. They, they all had chemistry. I really love the chemistry. Especially they did. Parents. Absolutely. Yeah. And tell me about making that coffin. I mean, for a couple. That had to have been a nightmare to make. Well, our production designer, Chris Wishart, was the, you know, you know, I, I sort of had a, you know, I had a meeting with the, with the, the art team you know the the production design and the you know art director <laughs> and we went through the script and they were very excited because i don't think they did a ton of horror things and this was sort of a first and i explained that that was just something i needed built i mean there were a few things that we needed and i was like we've got to have like a double bed coffin <laughs> and they you know sure enough one day i go out there and they're building it and it was wonderful and then we put our great actors in there and, and uh, they, they were just giggling. They, they, you know, they had a good time. They understood, you know, the humor of it. And uh, I thought that worked out really nicely. When they're moving into the family next door who doesn't like vampires. I mean, the gag is, you know, they're moving in this double barrel coffin, you know, yes. <laughs> like you're moving in a mattress. It is hysterical. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Very funny. And the other, great. Episode, the other episode, it was something borrowed, something blue. And I'm telling you, I don't throw the word legend around very often, but you know, Tom Atkins, you know, Halloween 3, right. Maniac Cop, uh, Night of the Creeps. I saw that when I was 17. You know, I'll never forget that movie. Mm -hmm. And he was just fabulous. Wasn't he? I, I got very, very lucky. We, uh, you know, I had asked if we could get Tom Atkins. You know, I'd asked Greg Nicotero. I, I said, you know, you think it's possible? And, you know, he really was sort of bringing me through the process, Greg. He was training me, really. <laughs> and he said, well, call casting. See if they'll send him the script. And they did. And he agreed to do it. And I was a nervous wreck because like you, I'm a huge fan. And he came to Vancouver and he couldn't have been more delightful, which is a word I don't even use. But I mean, he was just 
absolutely everything you could hope for and a million times more. He was supportive. He was funny, tons of energy. He understood the script. He understood the humor. And uh, I think he just really played it out. And uh, yeah, I was, you know, yeah. Y'all most of his horror films, no, most of his horror films, he does that tongue in cheek humor, you know, right. uh, how many lines like thrill me, you know, he does, he just, yes. uh, you know, so he understood there was that balance. There. I'm glad you gave him an opportunity to do some of that too. So it was really funny. Oh, it was, it was great. I mean, I, it was a funny thing. The, the best thing he said to me at one point was he said, uh, am I going to get arrested by the overacting police? <laughs> and I said, this is cream show. You, you know, you, you can't go wrong. And I mean, you know, he was doing the gag with the inhaler and, you know, yeah, I saw that. Really I'm asthmatic. So I was like, Hey, I relate to that. So I, I just used it this morning. <laughs> yeah. So it was like I said, everything we did was, was, you know, sort of fit to him. And I, I, I just adore him and uh, feel so blessed that I got to spend that time with him and that he, you know, knocked it out of the park as usual. Well, you gave him a great, great script and great, great vehicle to work with. It was, he was just so good at it. And, and no, that's I, fantastic. Yeah. Also, another word for legend, Greg Nicotero. I mean, the man is amazing. Oh my God. I've had the pleasure of interviewing him over the years, and he's just such a genius. What's it like working with him? What kind of producer is he? Well, he's, you know, he he's really amazing. I mean, I've been friends with him for a long time, full disclosure. You know, we've, been, <laughs> we've known him, him forever. So we do have a shorthand, but he's amazing because he he's so generous. He He knows what the show is. But on the, on the same token, he he really gives you a lot of room to breathe. I mean, if you come up with something and you convince him, he'll let you do it. Like he's he's really, you know, he's not stringent that way, but he's so enthusiastic. I mean, he's such a huge fan himself, as we all are, that it, it, it's intoxicating. And you, you get to, like I said, but very, very easy to work with and so knowledgeable. I mean, if you ask him anything, you know, how do I do this or how does this work? You know, he's got the answer. And, you know, he was the, after the first day, in fact, that I directed because I hadn't directed and I was a nervous wreck. And he called me, you know, that evening and, you know, sort of calmed me down and, you know, gave me all sorts of advice. So it's, it was great. And he's and, a great, uh, and I'm mad that I have to say these nice things about him because we are <laughs> friends, but I, but I have to. Well, I've heard it from many people. He's a great collaborator. He loves ideas. He's Absolutely. not, a, yeah. So mm -hmm. you, that's, that's gotta be the best working environment too. Absolutely. It, it, it couldn't, like I said, there's so much freedom and same token. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't let you fall. You know, he's, he's, he's got his eyes on everything. You know, the, if, if you, even, you know, even the, like you mentioned the coffin, you know, he looks at the design if he likes it, you know, you know, then he approves it and, you know, sort of goes from there. So, you know, you do feel safe. And that was really, a, you know, a big part of it for me. You know, the, the people he surrounded us with, you know, the crew, everyone, you know, you really felt like, OK, I'm I'm supported. I can get through this. <laughs> so that was yeah. really, you know, it. And I also liked about your episode, Something Borrowed, Something Blue, is that you have this apocalyptic creature that comes out to destroy the world, but we never really see it. We just know where it lives. We hear it. And I love horror films that you use your imagination, right? And you did that through the whole episode, which I loved. Oh, that's great. And that's, a you know, the script is by Zach White and Todd Spence, who, who wrote several things this season. And uh, it really had an element of fun. But I'll tell you something funny. The um, We found that house that we used. And the originally the script had the pit built into the floor of that room in the basement, you know, this, mm -hmm. this sort of his man cave. And um, we go to the house and there's a safe in the wall, which is like it's already there, that safe. So I was like, can we use this? I said, you know, this, this, this looks like something where you, you know, you put a safe in the wall and keep this monster. And they're like, well, we'll, you know, we'll talk to the owners. Well, the owners who were relatively new to the house were unable to open the safe. They had never opened it. So we had no idea what was in there. And for about a month, you know, before the thing shot, I was like, did we get that safe open yet? And they're like, no, no, not yet. We have to get a locksmith. No one knows the combination. And when we opened it, I was like, there could be the mini cow in there. We don't know what's in there. <laughs> of course, it was an empty room, but but it was, it was like Al Capone really safe, of, right? <laughs> it was exactly that. If we had Geraldo there, we would have had nothing was in there. there. And nothing was in there. But uh, but it, I think it helped 
that it was in, you know, it was just one of those things that happened to be, you know, serendipity that there was this giant bank vault in the, you know, in the basement of this house. So anyway, that was. Well, men, thanks for setting the mood for Halloween. Uh, new season of Creep Show on Shutter and AMC Plus. John, thank you so much for your time today. Let's talk again soon. I really Absolutely. Happy Halloween. Thank you.